What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now if you can't tell by today's video, we got another underwater salvage job today. We're actually headed to a place that we go to several times a year to repair a water pump that's in about 25 feet of water. Now this is a farm that we're going to, but they've got a private quarry there that they use as a swim hole. It's kind of like a summertime swim hole that their customers can pay and swim. They also do a ton of weddings and this water pump actually runs a waterfall and that's what needs to be fixed we've got to get the pump fixed so it's pumping water up to the waterfall and then of course they can get their weddings back and going but with that being said it's super early this morning it's about 5 a.m right now and i've got to go pick up two other guys and we're going to head down and see if we can get this water pump lifted up from the bottom get it fixed and then get it reinstalled now the kicker is we've only got three hour or a three hour time frame to get this done in we're going to start around seven o'clock this morning and of course we've got to be off the premises around 10 a.m so we've got three hours to lift up a water pump take it out of the water get it fixed put it back in the water and then reinstall it at a 25 foot depth but i've got a little bit of a ride here got to go pick up two more guys and then of course we're going to get down the road and get started with the day to start this dive out with, we are actually halfway through it, to be honest with you. Um, there's two reasons you're not going to be able to see what happened here at the beginning or how we rigged to get this water pump out. First reason is there's so much dye in this quarry here that everything is just green. So it doesn't matter how much editing I do to the video, all you're going to see is just basically a green screen here. The other reason is I forgot to hit the record button. So you're not going to actually see the rigging um, of this pump, this water pump, or what we call the rocket ship, um, until it's actually out of the water. Now, one thing that we are going to do is we will show you at the end how we put it back in. But if you notice that SMB, just how quickly it was coming up, and then all of a sudden you'll see these bags. Um, anytime you lift something, I don't care if it's a 25-pound lift bag, a 50-pound lift bag, or a 1,000-pound or a 10,000-pound lift bag, uh, you never want to be attached to that. You want to be able to hold, you know, have some type of control over it, but never be attached to the point that you can't let go. Now, we're only dealing at about 25 foot of depth here, but still we know that the uh, biggest pressure change is between 0 and 33 feet. So if you would have been holding on to this bag and come up from 33 feet, you would definitely have had some type of uh, barotrauma happen there. Now that we got it up, we're going to go ahead and swim it over to the edge of the water and go ahead and get the pump out. Now I always get asked a lot, you know, Brian, why don't you ever edit your videos and, you know, put more color back into the water and stuff? And if we did more just pure diving videos, like maybe out in the tropics or even here in our lake in general, then we probably would do that. But the reason we don't do it on these salvage videos is simply because we want you guys to actually see what we see with our own eyes. So that's why you're seeing on the screen. Yeah, there's a lot of dye here in this uh, little quarry, but we want you guys to see exactly what we see with our eyes and what we're working through. Um, just to kind of let you know and to give you some confidence about yourself that when you're down there, you can, you can do this same type of work. If you train for it, you have the right gear for it, you can do this same type of work. I know as an instructor, I'll always have open water students who are, they tend to be afraid to do their dives in a local lake. And they're like, well, I can't see nothing. It's, you know, it's too mucky for me. And the, the truth of the matter is, is if you can dive in conditions like this, and obviously this is not ideal for your open water class, but if you can dive in conditions like this, then you can pretty much dive anywhere in the world. Now what I'm actually doing here is lifting up the pyre cable that runs the pump. And with this being a rock quarry, there's literally rocks everywhere. And so I wanted to get that pyre cable um, unhooked from around the rock so that we could get it out. Now that we've got the water pump swam over to the edge of the ramp there, we're going to go ahead and just take our time. We're going to disconnect our uh, lift bags from it. And then we're going to kind of get our wits about us so that we can lift the um, water pump up into the upright position and you'll see here in just a minute while we call this thing a rocket ship it literally looks like a rocket fixing to take off um, and and what you're actually looking at is a stand with a pvc housing and then you've got roughly uh, a thousand pound uh, water pump on the inside of it 
And that's one of the reasons that we use two 1,000 pound bags. We could actually lift this thing very easily with, with a single 1,000 pound bag, but the reason we use two is so that we can evenly disperse the lift across of it. And you'll see why that's very important towards the end of the video as well. But as we get the bags out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get everything prepped to get this guy pulled out. And it takes three of us lifting up on this thing just to walk it up on shore. Um, and we're actually in very shallow water right there. I'm going to say less than four feet of water where we're at currently. So as we get it up to the ramp, you'll see we'll just take our time. We're going to use proper lifting techniques. We're going to lift it straight up. We're going to walk it up maybe five, six feet, and then we'll set it down and relax get another grip on it and then walk it up. Once we have this uh, water pump all the way out, um, we will go ahead and kind of lay it over for the surface crew to disassemble it and of course get it repaired. Um, but here we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to get all the way out in one full, full swoop here. And like I said, we just wanna take your time when you're doing stuff like this. I know a lot of guys think salvage work's really cool because you get to lift stuff underwater. This is the stuff that you don't actually get to see that we do. It's all the surface prep work and all, all the uh, hard work, if you will. Most of the stuff underwater is pretty easy. Yeah, if it's limited visibility, a lot of times we're working in the blind. But doing stuff like this, this is the hard stuff because um, we have to coordinate our efforts to do this. We've got to make sure everything's in proper order. We can't be damaging stuff. Um, and we want to protect ourselves. Could you imagine if this thousand pound water pump was to fall on top of one of us as we're carrying it up it's it's definitely would would definitely hurt us if that happened but now that we got it up we're going to let the surface crew go ahead and replace the uh, pump itself which you're fixing to see here in just a second that's the actual water pump that's what weighs a thousand pounds and that's what's inside that pvc uh, pipe that's let's call it the engine of the rocket ship if you will but once they've got it replaced uh, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, pump system back into water and we're going to re-rig the bags. And here, this is what I was talking about earlier of why we use two 1,000 pound bags just for a simple 1,000 pound water pump. We have to get them evenly dispersed. So we're actually going to put a bag at the front or at the top of it there where the nozzle is. And we're also going to put a, um, a bag towards the base of it. And the reason is, is as we're swimming it back out across the quarry to get it put in position, we have to reattach the uh, intake hose. Um, so what you're looking at there, of course, is the pump, but there's a hose that connects to that that goes up to the irrigation system um, that this uh, business uses. So we got to make sure that they're evenly dispersed, and by dispersing that weight out across, it makes it a whole lot easier for us because we can lay the pump over on its side versus leaving it standing and trying to walk it out to a certain depth to where it just floats via the bags. This way we can go ahead and just lay it over. We're going to have even disbursement both on the top side and lower side, and then it just basically lays flat in the water column. And then, like I said, as we go to reattach the hose, the intake line on it, um, it's a whole lot easier trying to do that than to lift this basically 100-pound hose up above our head, above water, to connect it into the intake itself. So just little things like this when you do jobs like this you know taking your time not rushing it thinking it through it, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier and make jobs like this a whole lot more successful too so once we get everything rigged we'll go ahead and hook up the bags and then we're going to swim it back out um, to what we call the pit area there which is where we actually salvaged it up from as you can see here, we're starting to lay it over. Once we get it laid over, we'll go ahead and throw the air to the bags. That's going to hold that thing perfectly horizontally trimmed here at the surface. And it's roughly about a foot and a half to two foot under the water. you got to understand those straps have a little bit of play in them there that our bags are hooked to. Um, and that's going to allow us to really manipulate that hose in the best position that we can because we can raise and lower it with a 50-pound lift bag that we've got attached out there. But we're going to go ahead and lay it over and just take our time and swim this guy back out. And if you've never tried to pull a thousand pounds through the water, let me tell you something. It's a pain in the butt to do, so definitely take your time when you do this. Now that we've kind of got it into position here, we're going to uh, make sure the power cable and everything is exactly where it needs to be. And we're going to go ahead and reattach 
uh, the intake hose itself. And here's what I was talking about just a few minutes ago. Keeping that thing horizontally trimmed just below the surface is going to make it easier when we go to snap the hose back on. You'll also notice that, fit, that yellow 50 pound lift bag, I'm using it to control the height of that hose. And I'm working in coordination with the other divers there. This happens to be my dad that you're seeing on camera now. He, he decided to come out and help us on this job. I'm working in coordination with him to make sure everything gets lined up. So as I move power ho or the power cable out of the line, we'll line it up with the intake. And you'll see I'll pop up temporarily. I'll go ahead and drain some air out of the lift bag just to lower that hose. And I'm not letting it all out. I'm just letting just a little bit out of the time. I'm literally dropping an inch at a time underwater to get everything lined up. Once everything's lined up, it's a pretty simple procedure. We just simply hook the hose straight to the intake, clamp it down, and then, of course, that part's done. Um, after we get everything pre-attached, all it is is to slowly deflate the uh, larger 1,000 pound bags and we try to do the lower side bag first and that way um, as the uh, water pump starts to sink it will actually go vertical which is the position we need it to be in and then once it's in a vertical position we let the air out of the upper bag and of course it will basically stand up straight. Now once it's standing up we do have to go down and, and check on it and make sure everything's positioned just properly. The pit that we're in is basically just a hole in a big rock quarry is all it is. But it's not a very wide pit. It's only about seven foot wide by probably 15 feet across. So it's really not that big. We have to make sure we get this rocket ship, if you will, positioned just right so that um, it, it can get the best draw from the quarry itself. And we don't want it leaning over. It does tend to walk a little bit once the pump is running. But basically that's what you're seeing here now. And, and guys, like I said, there's a reason we don't edit these videos anymore and we don't add color correction back in. We want you guys to see exactly what it is we're seeing underwater. So basically all, all we're doing here is two or three of us down on the bottom. We're constantly picking up on this uh, water pump, trying to get it positioned just right. And then once everything is positioned, then of course we will um, come up have them go ahead and turn on the pump and, and fire it off and get their waterfall back going for them. But that's pretty good much going to be it for this video. I am going to give you some final thoughts here at the end because I know a lot of the guys have been asking, how do you get into work like this, whether you're a commercial diver or you're just a recreational or technical diver? So I'll kind of give you some final thoughts on how you can do jobs like this. Um, obviously, getting properly trained and going to some type of commercial dive school is ideal. Um, there are jobs that you can do without those types of certifications, which we'll talk about briefly here at the end. But uh, we're going to go ahead and head up to the surface now and kind of debrief with each other and make sure everything's running good. And then, of course, I'll give you some final thoughts as we get to the end. Alright guys, so we're all done today. We had a very successful dive. We was able to remove the water pump or the rocket ship, if you will, from the water, get the pump pulled out, get it repaired, and then of course reinstall it and get it hooked back up and sunk back down. Everything worked out great. We didn't have any issues whatsoever. Of course, the visibility kind of was bad there, but we was able to do it without any trouble. I want to leave you with two final thoughts. A lot of guys will ask once again, why don't you edit your videos more? Why don't you add color correction so we can see what it is you're doing? And the truth of the matter, we don't get to see what we're doing. When we work in environments like we do, we're it's touch and feel. If I'm searching and it's a muddy pond, I'm literally just picking around in the mud to see what I'm looking at. And I want you guys to experience exactly what I am. I want you to see this footage through my own eyes. And if I start doing color correction on these videos, then you're not going to get that experience. You're not going to know what it's like for us to be under there. So I try to keep these videos as realistic as possible so that you're getting the full experience the way we are in person. 
The last thing I want to talk about is getting training to do dive like, dives like this. I know a lot of you guys are, are very interested in this, and there's several different pathways you can go. Lake Hickory Scuba Center Incorporated is a commercialized dive company. We have commercial license, we have commercial insurance, and you know, in all honesty, if you're gonna be doing stuff outside of small search and recovery jobs, you need to go out and get commercially trained. There are a ton of schools here in the United States and all over the world that's gonna teach you commercial diving. And commercial diving is more than just hard hat or hard hat diving with surface spot air. It's doing what we do. A lot of times it is open circuit. Um, a good friend of ours at Lake Hickory Scuba is a bridge inspector for the state of North Carolina and he does it all on open circuit scuba. So please get proper training. Now, if you're gonna do small time salvage and things like that that you see sometimes here on our channel, you don't need commercial license to do that. All you need is a few core classes. Obviously, you're gonna need the open water class, because it's gonna teach you what you need to know about diving. It's gonna keep you safe. It's gonna teach you about all the different types of diving maladies that can occur. You definitely need a rescue diver program or a rescue diver cert because it's gonna teach you how to deal with stressful situations. Obviously, I would go for the Knot Diver course because the Knot and Limited Vis course is gonna teach you how to deal with limited visibility situations and how to communicate using lights and things like that. And then two of my favorites, it's probably the search and recovery and even the science of diving course. Both of those courses are gonna teach you exactly what it is you need to do to calculate lift, what we call lift theory, and also to be able to uh, do rigging and bring things up using lift bags. So these basic core courses are gonna be great for you to be more successful, whether you wanna be a search and recovery diver, a rescue diver, a public safety diver, or even just a small town salvage diver. Because I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.